Welcome to today's video everyone. My name is Mike the Tundra and today we're getting a little crafty. Last night I had this idea of creating a cardboard suit of armor for a wooden mannequin that I usually keep on my desk. And I figured it'd be a little lengthy to do it all in one video. So we're going to break it down in a couple of videos and make a series out of it. And today we're going to go ahead and start with the helmet of the wooden mannequin's cardboard armor. Now, last night I drew up some very basic design sketches that I think I'm going to roughly follow to today. So it may take us a couple of times to get things right, but we'll get there a rainy Sunday and a nice little activity to get my hands doing something and being productive for the day. So we're going to jump right in into it. I'm really hoping that everything kind of works. I haven't really done any testing of any sort, but I figured if we just give it an honest effort, how bad could it possibly come out, you know? So we'll go ahead and just get right into it. If I have any mess ups, I have plenty of cardboard to fix things along the way. All right, so where do we begin? The inspiration of this whole suit of armor is something of a bird or owl. And so the idea is going to be a layered, maybe a light suit of armor, feathers, add claws or something like that. I, I know this for a first time project in cardboard, I'm feeling incredibly ambitious with what I am taking on, but I like that. It gives us something to reach for. I'm not sure if the scissors will give us the cleanest outcome, but I don't have any proper knife to do any fine cutting outside of like a basic pocket knife but I don't know if that would be any different than using scissors. So I figured, all right, so the running idea that I have for this helmet is like a long extended piece coming from the mouth area that will meet in with the other one. And the idea here is to kind of create this beak-like front of the helmet, like not, a, dramatically so but just enough to kind of subtly get the idea that it could represent a beak maybe kind of uh, round out the tips just a little bit along the top I'm gonna have it layered so that it kind of looks like uh, like feathers would if they were laid on top of each other as I was preparing and setting up this video earlier I was thinking that the more I thought about the details of this suit of armor, I started to kind of give it a whole persona, right? So perhaps who might be wearing this suit of armor? And with a lot of the kind of woodland aspect to it, the feathers, the bird-like thing, I was thinking something of, of an owl even, and that kind of got me thinking like, oh, my Alexa is going crazy, but I, of course, now that I've said the name, always listening. Sorry, I can't help with that. But you should check out this week's hottest games. Do you want to hear game show games, trivia games, math games, or hear more categories? I would like to hear a trivia game. As you wish. Here's question of the day. Welcome back. Here is today's question of the day. The topic is general knowledge. It is worth four points. Which country has the largest number of people who are vegetarians? You can choose from A, Brazil, B, China, C, India, or D, United States. Uh, India. Correct. You have earned your second general knowledge badge in four points. With around 400 million vegetarians, or about a third of the country's population, India has more vegetarians than the rest of the world put together. I kind of also guessed on the India question as well, the vegetarians, but I figured that India had the largest population. And so I figured that just by the number of people there were in the country that simply there'd just be more vegetarians by the statistical odds of just the population numbers. So I figured we've got these two circles cut out so far, they're going to be on like the ear pieces and I'm going to use it as a kind of a joint for everything to be glued to and so that way we can have kind of a center point so that we can keep everything together. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, sixteenths. We have the two center pieces of the helmet here. We're gonna go ahead now and cut them out. Oh my God, my dog just put her head on my foot and it's so warm. It feels like new, freshly printed on printer paper. So now we are going to create a series of overlapping pieces for the head. So we're going to go ahead and divide the head up into like maybe five or six segments. I'm trying to figure out what shape that my objects need to be and I'm thinking flat sides on the edges of the, the helmet and then I, I don't want to be perfectly round because I want to make it really good with the scissors and I think the with cardboard and scissors I think relatively like 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 an octagon right like a multi-sided but straight sided circular object it's the oblong octagon the oblong octagon <laughs> that sounds really great we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of those i think it measures up pretty well honestly i think this is gonna go so we're gonna the idea is to create like a couple of these so that they go around the head so we're looking at maybe five or six in total do you ever consider the more you think about something or do something that you realize that subconsciously it always becomes a part of you. And by that I mean like you always influence your actions. Who you are always influence your actions, right? So I'm thinking the more I do this and the more I realize like what encourages or influences my design elements and things of that nature. So in this regard, I have a very like, very elvish looking piece of armor. And then I'm like, wow, I always choose like the elvish characters. I've always just kind of related more to it. And then I'm thinking if you go even further than that, I always tend to pick at least for the first time in many games. It's always something in the realm of archery, stealth. If there's some blend of those two, that's my all that's my go to. Always. And I can't get enough of it. And it plays so well to how I think and act. And so now I'm here designing this helmet for what is inevitably going to be a character that very likely uses a bow or dagger and I'm like come on am I even creative am I even do I <sighs> am I so predictable to myself and then I'm like you know it's not so bad getting to know yourself I feel like I didn't do this one right but maybe I did it better than the last one and maybe that's why it looks weird no this is definitely not right what is wrong here this measurement Okay, I mean, that looks fine. I mean, it's okay that if the marker is a little thick in some areas, because you're going to be able to see the marker outlines on the armor, which I think is going to look really slick in the outcome. But I don't mind a little thickness of it because it looks a little worn. You know, it doesn't look perfect. The bands of leather become creased. Scratches just no longer buff like they used to. And that's okay. Because now your armor has a little bit more character. And perhaps you've even reinforced it over time and it's stronger than ever. And then you realize you're not so different from the armor you wear. Maybe that too is a part of you. We could drown, we're getting so deep. Let's pedal back a little bit, shall we? Let's talk about dogs again. Oh yeah, that's gonna look super slick. And I am using little dots on the armor for measurement points and so you're actually gonna be able to see just a little bit of that and it looks so cool i'll get a lot of i'll get close-ups when i'm done it looks great i'm actually so proud already we've got so much work ahead of us but i'm already so proud i, I love this i already feel so accomplished i should do things more do, do more things like this often there's so much life to be lived even within your bedroom walls you can't even imagine the possibilities if you were to just simply step outside so I turned off the camera for just a moment to let my dog out and <clears throat> while I'm about to go outside there's a huge crack noise and my dog freaks out and my candle that was lit on my desk exploded 
it cracked the glass and then it set off my fire alarm which of course spooked everyone for a moment there and I was like god damn over a candle so I'm gonna take my dog out I'll be right back and then we'll go ahead and start assembling we're going to be taking some of this glue, applying it to a lot of these pieces, and then sticking them together in hopes that they will eventually apply nicely onto his head and sit nice and gently up there and look wonderful. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Best of luck to us. Now I'm trying to decide if I want this on top or underneath. I'm thinking for the front piece, I'm gonna have that on top, and then for these, I'll have these underneath. Or maybe those will go on top as well. Oh wait, you know what I didn't really consider? Was that these pieces were going to be on opposite sides of the helmet, so I actually made this one backwards, so I need to remake this one real quick. Pretty simple pattern. Oh my goodness, that doesn't look good, but. All right, we're gonna put more glue than we need. This is gonna be like fundamentals of the helmet here, so we wanna make sure everything from this point forward sticks really well. And that's gonna do it for today's video. Honestly, in conclusion, the helmet was hard as hell to actually assemble and put together, but I think the helmet turned out pretty cool for, you know, it's our first go at it. And it took a lot of time. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the time in the background, but it's been about two or three hours that, since I started this. But that's okay, it was a lot of fun. I think, uh, I wanna show you this as well. <clears throat> These were the pieces that I initially cut out for like the top of the helmet but they ended up being too short in length, and so I had to create much larger pieces that you now see in the helmet so that it would actually fit together. So there is some learning that goes through with this, but I think we're gonna, with some practice, we're gonna have a pretty dope set of armor when we're all finished and done, but I think the helmet turned out great. I appreciate any likes, comments, and subscribing on the video that you may do. And of course, please join me next time to see how the entire armor turns out because I have no idea which direction it's going in. So I am open to suggestions and things like that between now and then. But until then, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.